Hey everyone, Shaber 1000 here. Today we've got this Briggs and Strat, and I think it's a six and a half horse. Um, we're gonna try to get this, see if this will start. Uh, I've got a carburetor for it somewhere that'll fit it, but I'm not sure exactly where it is. This one didn't have a carburetor when I got it. It was sitting there on the bench and I forgot to pick it up when I was gathering up the other stuff. So, and the guy's moved out now, so. All right, but I figure what we can do, we'll, we'll squirt a little, dump a little fuel down in there and start it up. It's, if it runs, it should start and run for a second and then quit. It'll run wide open. But we just want to see if this is going to run or not. So uh, it's not locked up. But we're going to try to start another one over here. Uh, Briggs and Hat, Briggs and Stratton, three or three and a half horse. I got sitting down here. We're going to try to start it. Um, it's not locked up either, so uh, should be interesting. So let's get to the intro. And I'm going to put this down here on the ground in the sun where you can see it better. We'll score some gas in here. We'll see if it'll fire. Okay, guys. Got me a little bit of fuel in this little tiny bottle here. It's got a squeeze top or whatever. Just gonna squirt this down in here. Like I said, all I know about it is what I know about it. <laughs> you know what I told you. So, I don't know if it's got spark, but we're about to find out. Like I said, I do have a carburetor in that garage somewhere. I'd like to get it cleaned out this weekend. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, that runs. <laughs> and it sounds good. Let's do that one more time. Uh... May have to build something out of this. Well, build something and put this on it, I should say. <laughs> Briggs and Stratton, first crank every time. All right, let's get on to engine number two. Uh, I'm not so sure about engine number two, but let's check it out. Okay, so here's engine number two. No exhaust. Uh, this is a coil that came off that red motor um, that we got running the one that was locked up. That's a coil off of it. I'm still going to see if I can get it working on here. As you can see, I just checked the oil. It was a little low, not much, but I went ahead and topped it off with some oil I've got here. Didn't take much, but we know it's got oil in it. All right, so I think what we're going to do first is just clean this magnet up and I'll clean these up again with the wire wheel and uh, yeah, and we'll put this on it. Now on these coils, they'll usually say a flywheel side or cylinder side. And it looks like this one says cylinder. So what that means is it would go on like that. That's the way it'll go on. Let's make sure I, these screws will work. Yeah, they'll work. So I don't know anything about this engine. All I know is I pulled the coil off, put on the red one. So hopefully this coil will magically work on here. Um, I've, I've done that before. Uh, had a coil not work, pull it off, you know, change it. And then later on down the line, I grabbed that coil again. And, uh, it just, uh, it, it worked on something else. So, but let me get a wire wheel. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm not going to put the governor on it just yet because, uh, you know, it goes on here. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, it goes, all right, whatever. But, I can't believe I like. <laughs> forgot how that governor goes but we're not going to need it because we're not running it so uh i'm going to clean this off again real good and then we'll put this on here and i'll adjust it with a piece of paper like i did last time let's see if we'll have any spark okay well you guys saw i had in my hand one of the screws for the coil has up and disappeared um i am going to put a little bit of Okay, that wasn't very tight. I'm going to put a little bit of... WD-40 down in here. Feels a little sluggish, you know what I mean, when I'm turning it. So... It'll just smoke a little one and if it fires up I did already oil the recoil starter up I put some lube in it I may have put some thicker oil in there okay so I'm gonna see if I can find that bolt I rolled the, the video back and I checked and said, yeah, that'll work. And I set it right down here beside the other one. Now I've only got one. So, uh, not sure what's going on there. Okay, I found it. It was over here on the ground. So, I put some thicker oil in here. Regular motor oil. Like I said, I don't know if this coil will work on here or not, but we're going to find out. I should put one of these motors on a bike I got around back, but man, tires and tubes are so expensive. The bike was free. And I don't think I would keep it. I would probably sell it, but you know, that... That's a big profit margin there, you know, to, uh, to, to go building something like that out of scratch, you know, uh, there's a couple things I would have to buy, but I like, you know, building stuff that I have just laying around because I love to repurpose stuff, reuse things. <clears throat> take something that's broke for one thing and make it work for a totally different you know just give it a different a new life so to speak make totally something totally different out of it all right let me get this bottom one down here and then uh I can do it like this. Then, um, what are you guys seeing? Then we'll pull it over. It looks like this motor was white at one time. It's like, man, there's something about black paint. Everybody's got to paint something black. They'll take something that looks beautiful, you know. I don't like white. So they'll paint it black and make it look worse. I don't, I don't get it. In my book, if something's decent, I'm good with that, you know. Alright, now, what are you guys looking at now? Let's get you down here, maybe I can... 
I don't know if this plug is any good or not. I know you guys can't, you're not going to be able to see that. But I can see it and I can feel it. All right. Get the plug in here. And uh, we use our little squirt thing. Let me get it down on the ground. And we'll squirt a little gas in here. Put the plug in it and see if it'll fire off. If it fires, then... Uh, We'll put some gas in this tank. The tank don't look that bad. It's a little dirty inside, but it's not all rusted up like the other one. Uh, I'm not sure about the carburetor, what kind of shape it's in or anything like that. <clears throat> but, you know, let's give this a little bit of help. There we go. If it does run it may smoke a little but we're okay with that all right okay guys so I grabbed the spark plug out of that orange motor because we know it's good it's actually sitting on the mini bike right now I put it on there and hooked it up uh, this does have good spark right now <laughs> But I think before, if I remember right, we were getting sparks sometimes. I know that's not tight, but... Alright. I don't want to get shocked real bad. So, yeah, if this fire's over, we'll put some gas in the, in the tank and see if the carburetor is going to work. Let's choke it. Oh Lord, that is cool. Riggs and Stratton, baby. I love them. Now, if you got one of these kind of carburetors, the old style carbs here, that take the screw that go down into the top, make sure you have that in there if you're going to run it for a minute or check it out without the air cleaner on. You have to have that screw in there. Alright, that's just the uh, recoil, that's not a big deal. Okay, let's get some gas, we'll put some gas in it. We'll try to run this thing. So if you guys have a small engine lawnmower, tiller, whatever, it can be horizontal shaft, vertical shaft, it doesn't matter. If you hear that god awful whining noise, this is what the problem is. And like you start it up, mix that noise and wants to shoot the rope back out at you. It's this. You're not supposed to lube these up. And this one feels okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take this off and uh, okay. And we're gonna we're gonna check this out inside of here. Make sure it's up to par but that's what causes that so why it was doing that i don't know all right now this should just pop off there because these those two little screws is what holds this assembly together so it should just pop off let me grab a screwdriver Sometimes tapping them will work. There's little ball bearings in here. You got to be careful when you take this off. They'll probably come running out at you. So just be careful with that. Uh, let 
me get a little tiny hammer. There we go. Sometimes that's all it takes. Just a little bit of dirt. Now, as you can see, this is coming up out. See, there's the little balls. Uh, the reason why they don't want you lubricating these is because if they stick out there like that, you'll have that problem. Um, but I'm going to use some WD-40 because it doesn't last long. And it's, there's some dirt there that could have been causing it. And uh, it, goes away, it goes away pretty quick. Now I'm going to wipe this out a little bit. There is some dirt in here. In fact, I got my blow gun right here. I'll go ahead and blow it out, wipe it out real good, and then we'll put it back together. All right, I've got a, I've got it blown out. Yeah, dropped one. <laughs> Come on, man, really? Now, this thing, there is a wick in, the, in here. And there's a little hole here. You can oil that wick up. So once I get this down in here, as you saw, I took this off. This just slides off. And I'm going to put this down in here. I'm going to get all these little ball bearings. Up here out of the way. Well, what I should have did. Hang on guys, that's my bad. Oh, that's magnetic. Cool. I don't know what I'm thinking here. All right. Put this in here. Now. You want this to be able to spin nice and free like that. All right. So now we're going to put our ball bearings in there. These are called dogs, it's not really a gear. Oh, you dog. No, that's a bearing, okay. All right, and then, see how they go up and out of the way? Can you guys see that? What are you looking at? See how these ball bearings, so when you go to push it, you know, when you pull the rope, they get caught in there. And you can spin the engine. Then when the engine starts, you know this, it goes like this. See? It's kind of like a ratchet. Those seem everything seems to be working good here. So we're gonna put this back together here. Just a little tip tap. That's all it takes. one switch here all right now we'll put our little screws on yours might have four screws in it on all four corners it might just have two this one I can tell by the screen it only had two out of the factory the motor looks older than what it is because I mean it's an old motor don't get me wrong but it's uh it's got electronic ignition in it, not points, so. I can see maybe someone changing one of, one of them over to points, but not both this one and the red one. All right. Now, 
should be a model type and code number on this thing and as you can see the stickers not great it's not here it is give me one second I'll look at the date code and I'll tell you what year this engine is two numbers on the code that says 84 so this is probably since how all the paint and everything matches I'm guessing it's probably the original you know sometimes someone could change change this recoil starter on you and you think you have one thing but it's another you know all right so I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in these bolts back in and then we're gonna put some gas in the tank and see if that carburetor does anything okay guys I put about a half a tank in it but we're gonna go ahead and prime it anyway I brought me a screwdriver down here so I can shut it off since there's no kill switch on it I don't like shutting them off by choking them because then you get all that raw fuel sitting in there could cause you problems later but let's see how well this thing runs Can you guys see that all right? Okay. Let's try this. It fired. Could be losing spark again, like it was doing on that red motor. There it goes. Well, if anything, we know it runs. Might need some carb work, but it's just this. Well, that's almost, that's all the way closed pretty much. A half, one, one and a half. Cool. Might not be sucking any fuel up in, but that's okay. At least we know the motor itself's good. You can still buy rebuild kits in here. There's a diaphragm in here. And one down in here, it's kind of like your fuel pump. Alright. Well, we know it runs. Woo, it's hot. I gotta go cool down. There's the side of this one. There's a little spring in here. I took the diaphragm out. There's two little reed valves here. Them two reeds, one right there, one right there, but you can also see through this. So it's probably not going to run right. I took the one off the red one, and it's in worse shape. And I don't know how it was running as good as it was, but uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna put this back on here. like that and then uh i don't have any of those but we'll see if we can get it to run a little longer but i don't know what i'm going to do with these motors so i'm not going to start buying parts for them yet so anyway let me get this put back on just the four screws and we'll try it again see what happens all right let's see if we can at least get it to run a little longer Just so I know there's no knocks or smoking real bad or anything. Here we go. Okay, good. 
I know that's a good engine. The uh, something else, the pickup. There's a pickup tube down at the bottom of this carburetor goes into the bottom of the tank, and what happens? They get clogged. Sometimes they'll rot off. That's the only thing you can't get for these carburetors. You can still get the diaphragms, but you can't get them pickup tubes. Okay, guys. So these two both run. The one that was locked up, the orange one, it runs. We got an unlock, it runs. So that's three out of four engines that were free. I still got the Robin over here. It's an eight horsepower. It's a racing go-kart engine. Um, I'm confident it'll run. I grabbed the spark plug and turned the flywheel and it, it, you know, it got me. So it does have spark. Feels like it's got decent compression. Um, it does not have a carburetor either. I have a carburetor that fits on it that will work to see if it'll start. I do not have a recoil, but I do have a rope in here somewhere we can wrap around and pull on it. I don't want to let it run real long if it does run good because um, the problem with it is there's no tins on it. These tins, that's what keeps your, that's what directs the air across your head and your block to keep these air-cooled engines cool. So, but what I've done before, I've made tins. It's kind of a pain. It's not hard. It's just time consuming, you know, bending and drilling and banging and beating, cutting. Uh, what I've done before was took like little uh, PC fans, put a PC fan on the head and let it run across the fins. And that, that keeps it just as cool as if you had the tins on it they just they look better with tins but if you don't care about you know if if you're going for you know functionality it, that'll work that'll work just fine you just get you a little battery and yeah just make sure you know that fans running so we've got the 96 and 84 <laughs> We've got the 84 and the 90s. <laughs> we've got the. We've got the 96 and the 84 running. So, and then plus we already know the. Uh, the uh, 79 CC Predator. We know it runs, which we knew pretty much out of the gate it would run because they had it on there, and the boy. His son had it running not long before that, a week or so before that, so I knew it was going to run. Uh, but these four that he gave me for free, one of them locked up, three of them run. So I'm pretty confident in that Robin engine. It's a, it's an old one. It's an old Wisconsin Robin engine. So yeah, it's the equivalent of an eight horse. It's an eight horsepower, and I, and I did run some numbers on I didn't look at what year but yeah they it was seven and a half to eight horsepower so uh, something like that yeah so it, it, he's, he's about right it's about it's about an eight horsepower I still got to run the numbers on that on that uh manco on the on the uh, on the mini bike because I'm not sure what year it is I seen seen one for sale online and they said it was 70s and it looked identical to mine. Had a different engine, but everything else was identical. But what I read before was the uh, Thunderbirds was 2008 to 2010 or something like that. Now, I, so I don't know, but that's getting information offline. Uh, not a good credible source, so I don't know. I'm just going to have to see if I can come up with anything on serial numbers on it and see what's going on with that, but... But either way, it's still, it's, that'd be cool if it was in the 70s, but, you know, that ups the price, you know, 25 to $50, depending on, you know, what you got, you know, if it's just a bare frame, yeah, maybe not, but, uh, but yeah, uh, so, two more running, I knew this one was going to be kind of a quick video, seeing as how I didn't have a carburetor that'll fit it. I do have one it's in the garage. I need to get it's it's in there, guys. And I seen it a couple weeks ago. But 
<laughs> but anyway, I gotta get that cleaned out anyway. So I can do some work in there this summer so I'm not out here in the heat. I can have some fans on me and stuff like that. And maybe get some better lighting. But, so I knew it was going to be a quick video because there really wasn't anything to do except squirt fuel into it and pull it. And both of these fired first crank. They fired up and ran. Well, this one did actually run, run. But, you know, it ran long enough to know we heard it run. I didn't hear any knocks. Didn't see a lot of smoke. Sometimes after they warm up, they'll start smoking a little bit. But um, I, I think they're all right. I don't hear any noises in them. So three out of the four engines he gave me are good. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the smaller ones. This one and the orange one, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll find another uh, another mini bike or small go-kart youth size that they'll fit on. Um, this one I'm not sure. It's a pretty good engine. Um, these, this one and the uh, the Predator, the 79cc, they have the uh, the uh, governors taken out of them, but they still got the rod. Someone left the rod up through because a lot of guys will just put a bolt, silicone a bolt, and stick down in that hole. But a lot of guys will just stick the rod back up in there because there's a seal and it seals it. This one I know is not hooked up because it wasn't moving. So, um, in fact, I think it's clear out of it. Uh, I know the one in the Predator has been removed. It's definitely out of there, but they just left the left the uh, shaft up in it. So, which that's what I've done whenever I've had to remove them like that before. These are easy because you know it was just it's just this thing. It's just a little, you know. <laughs> You don't have to take them apart to actually remove them but if you go stage one you can do that um, but if you go like stage two and stage three on them predators you got to take them out because they'll they'll actually keep spinning and they'll grenade themselves it's a plastic gear with metal like fingers in it yeah as metal metal fingers will come out and get wrapped around you know just it's not good to have metal flying around your engine when it's running it 4,000 5,000 rpm so but that'll never run at that kind of rpm so i'm not worried about it because it's just a stage one stage two is when you get into you know billet flywheels and bigger carburetors and and uh stage three is when you start getting into you know milling your head down you can do that yourself with a piece of sandpaper and uh stuff like that port and polish in the head billet aluminum flywheel and that kind of thing so all right guys i've done enough chatting i'm gonna go cool down for a little bit and i'm gonna come out and pick up my stuff monkey's doing her she's doing a t-move video and i'm out here running engines so as with any wife girlfriend fiance significant other partner yeah they don't like when you mess with their t-move videos so <laughs> The next video might be a camp out of me in the backyard. <laughs> Sorry, monk. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Two more running. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys, and take care.